Okay. We are live right now. Oh my gosh. Isn't that exciting? We're live. Woo -woo. Stone Fruit Roll Up. Hi. Hi, indeed. Hey everybody, live on location from Taylor Studio. Welcome to the Stone Fruit Roll Up, your weekly mm -hmm. Thursday morning for East Coast, Thursday lunchy for West Coast, Thursday dinner for UK time, I guess. Uh, our weekly live show where we're building the show that you're talking about building the show that you're watching right now. And I'm happy and pleased as punch to welcome episode one's guest. We're back, back into the fold, Miss Taylor Campia. <sighs> I'm an air horn. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Round of applause. That's so beautiful. T. Hi. Hi. It's 420, dog. It's 420. It's our high holy day. April 20th. Indeed. For anyone who does not know, 420 is um, in stoner culture as being the number that we all look for to validate our stoner identities. <laughs> and um, there are lots and lots of origin stories around 420 and uh -huh. why it is what it is. I've always believed that it's a California penal code for marijuana possession. I think that's a misnomer. I think that's not, I, I know. I like, I was looking this up the other day because I was trying to figure it out. And there's so many different stories. Like there's, there's that, oh, it's some band reference or, oh, it has to do with when school got out or, you know, there's all kinds of, but whatever it is, it's now become when a cultural. When school got out, that's interesting. Like 420 was when the bell rang. So now it's time to go smoke. Now it's time to smoke. So yeah. why are we talking about 420? Uh, 420, April 20th, and the time 420, again, being super important into stoner culture. And this is the only day in a calendar year that Stone Fruit will acknowledge the stone in our Stone Fruit brand. So I could not not come here and be live with Taylor to talk about branding and to talk about stonerhood and to talk about creativity and just to talk about um, living your life as a creative person. Whether you identify as someone who enjoys the cannabis or not, it is fun to engage in this kind of conversation. And this is the only day of the year that you'll see Stone Fruit acknowledge that. There are zero puns, zero wordplay, zero acknowledgement of anything related, related to pot or stoner culture in any Stone Fruit brand. You won't find it on our website. We don't talk about it. We barely acknowledge it. The only thing I say is, ah, Rebecca, you're really putting the stone in stone fruit today. That is about the amount of acknowledgement that we have. But I made a decision when I named this company that on one day and one day only, our high holy day, we would really talk about the stone and stone fruit. So here we are. I'm curious, have you ever talked about cannabis like this in a, in a public setting, like in a live internet <laughs> available setting? I was once interviewed for a documentary film you may have heard of called Can of Mommy, right? <laughs> but see, yeah. So yeah, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah I was, <laughs> y'all. Okay, number one, I barely knew Taylor at all when she was putting together this documentary film that was really chronicling chronicling the experience. That's not a word. Chronic. Hey! <laughs> all the stoner puns get a high five today. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> all right, buckle up, people. This, this is for you, Saturn. This is for you, who asked me to be so stoner punny today that it was like almost off the chain. So uh, you were chronicling. Nope, still not a word. Anyway, you were exploring the idea of what it's like for moms in a stigmatized world to talk about being someone who uses cannabis. Yeah. And I love that story because I was literally the only mom who didn't have a real medical, like, reason for it. Like, for me, it was just like, oh, I kind of like what it does and to my thought process. And I'm more creative and patient. And I like my personality when I've been down to the basement for a little running the laundry. Uh, and everyone else in your presentation was really around a medical need, medicine. Yeah. Um, and that was really important to you. So I, I, I made it, I was on the cutting room floor, y'all, for just being no, 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 no. We, <laughs> So, I mean, you know, we were working, so, you know, I have a video production company, we create documentary content, and we were actually working on a documentary about moms who use medical cannabis, but face stigma and persecution for doing so. And 
you know, we, this was, we were working on this documentary right before COVID and we were going to go into production in March of 2020. So obviously we know what happened then, but no, it's not, not that you were cut out of it. Uh, we just haven't actually finished it yet. <laughs> well, I still, so, the story for me is I'm on the cutting room floor for just being like, no. I just like to get high. That's it. <laughs> but see, you know what? I think that you're cutting, you're, you're selling yourself short because I don't think that is your story at all. I agree with you. Yeah. So, now that I've really kind of investigated it. Yeah. So actually, I mean, I don't want to flip this interview on you, but like, I want to, I want to, I want you to share actually, because I think it's important for people to know um, that cannabis is stigmatized in this country, you know, as much as like every state is legalizing still, it. Right. Right. Still. States are legalizing it for I know. I purposes. brought my card to prove. Yeah. It's upside down. I brought my card, you guys, to prove that this is the state of the world today, but I'm 50, so I've been driving to, like, shady parts of Southeast for years and years and years. This is a game changer um, that is considered, acknowledges medicine, but the stigma is still absolutely there. Yeah. We, that, it, yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter, like, who you are, what you do. You know, there's certain people that will see that you use cannabis and immediately assume something about you, immediately sort of have a filter of, like, who you are. Whereas if you saw somebody drinking a glass of wine or taking a prescription medication, you wouldn't think twice about it. You wouldn't you wouldn't make any assumptions or judgment, prejudgments about necessarily, most most likely in today's society. So I was I really just thinking about that on the way over here. I'm sorry to talk over you. Yeah. I was thinking about that on the way over here, how... People take Adderall all the time to stay focused at work. What is the difference between taking Adderall to, to you know, really kind of turbo boost your executive functioning and stay focused and on task and, you know, smoking uh, a joint or a bowl or... Taking an edible or... You're, you're taking an edible tincture. tincture or my favorite <laughs> um, to get into a creative space for working. If you are a creative person, what is the difference for that? you know, between Adderall and rip and bong hits, yeah. essentially. I don't really see much of a difference at all, except for the stigma of it, Yeah, for sure. And I don't think that's necessarily even changing so much. I had a conversation with Saturn, that's my 15-year-old, about whether or not might whether or not they thought it would be appropriate for us to smoke on camera. And the answer was no, even from a 15-year-old, and I asked why, and it was really around kind of like fear of your reputation. Mm -hmm. Then my argument was, well, honestly, anybody would be turned off by seeing this or my admission of it, particularly on 420 is probably not my client. Mm -hmm. Even if they're not stoners, the results stand for itself. Like my work isn't like, whoa, no one would hire you for this. I've been hired for this result for 19 years. Yeah. So obviously the Something's product working. isn't suffering yeah. how do you use cannabis i'm curious i you mean in terms of like how i ingest it no i mean like what is your what is your routine how do you how does it fit into your day into your process all day every day <laughs> <laughs> all day every day uh also want to acknowledge that jilly is here with us today in the comments so shout out to jilly coming in from the uk she has some comments but i literally cannot read them because we're here on location i have not my glasses on and um the laptop feels like it's a mountain away can yeah. you see what Julie's saying <laughs> she's saying oh, we're awesome and we're amazing hey saying, we're awesome and we're amazing <laughs> agreed hi jelly and anybody else who's watching us live this is pretty cool uh how do i use it i use it because what happens inside my brain chemistry when i do smoke allows me to get from like no idea what I'm going to write about or a general idea what I'm going to write about for a client to the story in like record time. So if I don't smoke and I sit down and I've got to write a blog post or I've got a, not that I write a ton of those, but I'm writing website copy or I'm doing positioning or I'm writing a YouTube description or I'm doing an email series or I've got to come up with a creative angle that isn't, I mean, it's branding, so you have to come at it from a very unique perspective that really resonates with your audience. If I don't smoke, that can take three to five hours. Mm -hmm. If I do smoke, that can take 90 minutes. Yeah. And it's a more interesting angle, generally, because it's a pers for me, it's a perspective shift. Yeah. And it just allows me to kind of get into just a little bit of a different space. Yeah. And write something unique, which... I honestly feel has incredible results. Yeah. 
people talk about my copy as being confident, like so bold and confident that it's hard to write that way. Yep. One thing that helps is to smoke pot first. Yeah. So that's how I use it. It's really interesting you say that because I was looking at, um, I just before this, you know, the shoot, I was kind of seeing like, is it, is, is cannabis useful for creativity? Has there been any studies? And like, first of all, I just want to sort of mention the fact that, you know, cannabis has obviously got a huge, hugely, you know, bad rap for a very long time for, for no reason. Like it was a, for it was no a, reason. Was, I posited the alcohol industry. Yeah. Well, no, it's also, I mean, yeah. it's based on like racist policies that were targeting black 100%. and brown people in the country. And I want to sort of acknowledge that there are still thousands of people in jail for crimes related to cannabis, while there are thousands of people becoming millionaires off of cannabis products. And I think that that is complete injustice. And if you want to do anything to support, there's an organization called the Last Prisoner Project um, that helps to work to advocate for people in jail for cannabis related crimes. So definitely check out the Last Prisoner Project. I'll awesome. see the link in your... Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Saturn, make sure there's a link in the show notes. <laughs> um, also, the, the brand Good Green. Yeah, Good Green is great. They yeah. help to support. They help to support preserve. that as well. And so what an acknowledgement while I'm like kind of flaunting my card here on camera, like, hey, I got my card, everybody. I just have to drive to Southeast. Like that actually um, completely bulldozes over that historical truth. Right. And um so I'm sorry, y'all. No, no, no. It's, but I mean, I want to recognize it. But, but going back to what I was saying, that I read, I read this study about um, that Harvard had done, which is amazing that people are actually finally studying cannabis for its properties, because for decades it wasn't even allowed to be studied um, for medical properties and, and things like that because of the restrictions that the federal government put on cannabis. But um, Harvard did a study: Does cannabis increase your creativity? Right. It's a pretty small study, only 300 participants, and there's some flaws I think with the study. And the study actually said. You know what they said. What the, what the interpretation of the results was that no, cannabis doesn't increase your creativity. What it does do is it increases your joviality and your sort of like inhibition around your own ideas. Maybe inhibition around your own ideas is exactly duh. Like right? I was like, how do you, can you read that and say that? Like, because to me, when I'm feeling creatively blocked, it's usually because of self doubt. It's yeah. usually because I'm self-editing all of my ideas before they even make it out of my brain. I'm like, no, that's dumb. That's dumb. That's stupid. That's never going to work. Whereas when I use cannabis, all of those, all that self-doubt is gone. It's like, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. That's a good idea. And then I can sort of evaluate later, you know, when I, when I haven't used cannabis and, and sort of edit those out and be like, okay, well, that was crazy. What's that's, that old Hemingway trope of write drunk and edit sober? Yes. Right. Somehow, somehow <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lines. yeah. I mean, it's very similar to that. Confidence. Right? Confidence. Yeah, exactly. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. Stop being your own, you know, editor before the ideas can even have a chance to take form. And all that is based on self-doubt, I think. Yeah. Like, it won't be commercially appealing. Yeah. And it's very, that's very interesting because as I sit here and think about what it is that happens to me when I'm like writing, I do kind of stop thinking about what will be commercially appealing. Will someone like it? Who's going to like it? Who's going to like it? What's going to happen? Who's going to like it? I have a little show and tell actually today oh. that is something along those lines. Since Jilly is here to acknowledge that um, Jilly has a, a brand new mastermind that she started two weeks ago called Rise Together. And look what came in the mail, you guys. That is beautiful. It's so beautiful. Uh, a a wow. personalized notebook. That has got your name on it. With my name on it. Yeah. And I really wanted to bring it today, not just because um, Jilly is here and she deserves this amazing shout out because what a branded experience yeah. this is. But also on here is a piece of copy that I wrote. Our wildest, vision, our wildest visions are never quiet. I wrote this completely high, you guys, and it is so validating to the client that it is on her notebook and also on a pencil. She had it done on pencils. Yeah. So don't doubt yourself. <laughs> don't doubt yourself. Yeah. Even the the kind of most um, ideas that you would have the ideas you would have talked yourself out of. Yeah. And she just mentioned in the comments, you know, lo loss of inhibition is exactly what expands creativity and that's it. Right. You know? So, um, and it's sometimes it's just stop, stop thinking, stop thinking so much at a problem from head on. And I think that's another thing that exactly. cannabis does is it allows you to kind of 
see things from multiple angles, kind of take you out of, you know, as human beings, we get into the rut of every day and we kind of have patterns and ways that we do things. We get really used systems to systems we grew up in. Right. And filters that we put on Absolutely. things. And I think cannabis helps you to just sort of come at those things differently. It sort of just drops all of those other filters and lets you come at it from a different angle. And actually, I want to mention, this is the first time I've ever talked about using cannabis. I was sitting here like, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God! I know. And this is my out. I'm coming out. I guess this is my cannabis She's coming out. Coming out. <laughs> coming. She wants the world to know. She's going to let it flow. Got my cannabis socks. Oh my God! Those are so cute. I have zero cannabis apparel. You you look really really cute. How does it feel coming out on camera today? It's a little nerve wracking, honestly. Yeah, because yeah, your um, clients oh, are okay. like corporate e. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so I own here's business, the stigma. Right? Like I can be like. Oh yeah, I'm a writer and a marketing person and a brander and a huge TV show and I smoke before I write copy and it's so cute. But my clients are entrepreneurial, like working for themselves, rebel rebellious. They don't want a boring brand, so they're gonna come to me for that reason. Yeah. For you, your clients might still be very much in like a, a world where that seems irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I work with clients that have clearance and, you know, that's part of their job that they can't even, you know, when you have clearance in this country, you can't use cannabis. Like you cannot get it, use cannabis and get certain levels of jobs in this country, but you get, you can drink, you, you can take yeah. other pharmaceutical medications, no problem. Um, but, you know, cannabis is a big no, no. So I feel, you know, it's really vulnerable to kind of put yourself out there and admit this. Um, I do thank you. <laughs> um, but I've had my medical card pretty much since Maryland um, had legalized cannabis for medicine. Um, it's changed my life in, in so many different ways. Let's talk about that. How's it changed your life? Um, well, so yay I, pot. Yay pot. I mean, I originally was prescribed it because I was in a car accident and I was put on a bunch of painkillers and muscle relaxers and things that I really didn't want to take. Um, and I had, you know, used cannabis recreationally. And so I knew that I enjoyed it. I knew it was something that helped me sleep. I knew it was something that helped relax me. And those were things that were really, I was struggling with after this accident. Um, and so I went and got my medical card, started using it for sleep and pain and then started to realize that I wasn't actually reaching for my pharmaceutical medications that much anymore. I wasn't reaching for the anxiety medication. I wasn't reaching for the ADHD medication. I wasn't reaching for helping things to help me sleep anymore. Um, cannabis was now a, a tool in my toolbox for all these sorts of things that I was, was struggling with. Um, and was able to completely replace my medicine cabinet. I mean, that's, kind of, that's really kind of amazing. Yeah. Exactly. It, I had no idea that, you know, because I had been, you know, cannabis was something that you bought, you know, down the street. It was like hush hush and you felt shame. You felt um, you were doing something wrong. And 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 now I was like going into a store. It's like it's like a candy store. You walk in oh and you're like, God. there's so many different options and choices and keep the bud tenders are knowledgeable. <laughs> you can ask questions like you could really dial it in. And what I like about cannabis is that it's one plant, but there's a million different applications of that plant and it's customizable for every person. The thing about body chemistry and the people about people is that everyone's different. Genetically, we are different. Our bodies react differently to medication, to foods, to the environment. And so when you have prescription medications that are really designed as a one size fits all, that there's one medication that's supposed to work for every person, that doesn't make sense to me. Everybody's different. So with cannabis, you can really figure out your own body chemistry, your brain chemistry, and working with bud tenders and working with the knowledge of terpenes, you can dial in cannabis to be exactly what you need at any point for whatever purpose. That's how I feel. So you can tweak your own algorithm. You tweak your own algorithm and like I mean, ha that's, hack your own algorithm. Like that's I mean, pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty is. neat. You're the one who turned me on to limonene. Limonene? Yeah. See, I don't even know what they are. <laughs> that's how old, that's how long I've been like just. We Rolling, you know, this is how long I've just been in the star culture. I don't know any of that stuff except for I do know that when that number is higher, I like the experience better. Limonene, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, limonene is a, it's a, it helps, it's a, it's, it brings you up. It helps you be, feel happy and brings up, you know, it's bright. It's like things that are in lemon. Think, imagine like smelling a lemon. Like, do you feel like, ooh, a lemon? You're like, hmm, a lemon. It's bright. It's fresh. You know, so, um, but yeah, so, so talking about cannabis, 
you know, and so my experience with cannabis was, was the inspiration for why I wanted to do this documentary. Because when I was, you know, as much as this medication was helping me and changing my life, I was still really ashamed of telling anyone that I used it. And I was still ashamed of, of people finding out and how they would receive that information. So I was like, is there, are there other people out there like me? And as I started talking to people, more and more moms I was talking to were like, yeah, I use cannabis. Yeah, I use cannabis. But none of us knew, like, these are people that I'd known for years and none of us had talked about it, you know? And I was like, this is a problem. So started working on the documentary and you graciously were one of the participants to share your story. So I feel like on the cutting room floor, I know, but I, I feel say. like, you know, if I'm asking people to share their stories and be vulnerable and put themselves out there, then it's only responsible that I am also doing that as well. And again, I feel like there's mm. serious injustice in the world when there's people like me that can walk into a store and buy this medication and that there are people that cannot. And there Agreed. is, there is a, there's a mismatch in that. So again, I want to use, my platform and any opportunity I can now. I'm to so glad you did help reduce those barriers. I'm so glad you did because I want to really come in here and be like, being a stoner is so fun. This is our day. We get to talk about it. And you're really bringing it into the socio political construct that it needs to be when we're talking about this kind of thing because it is who has, if we're using it to boost creativity, which is the point of this whole, this whole show today or this episode, who has access to be it's it's a privilege to be able to boost your creativity so that you can have more exciting jobs or creation jobs, and artist, yeah. artistry and things like that. Yeah, yeah, it is a privilege. So we should acknowledge that. Yeah. Link Pinks and have a like but I feel I like remember. I don't. I, so when we met, so Rebecca and I met almost five years ago. I cannot believe I that girl. I know that is crazy to me. I know you were. So you were originally my business coach, and know, yeah. originally you were mentoring me to start my business, which is now we are almost. This is this will be our anniversary coming up in May, and um and I think it was ve it was very quickly though that you and I realized that cannabis was part of our routine and that we made it part of our working routine as well, dude. Thank you for bringing that up because this is one of the most amazing things to really exemplify how it functions in our lives and our working relationship. There was a long time where I would um, come over to Taylor's house at least like like once a week or every yeah. other week and we would work together on a single day and we would work on her business and we would work a little on my business and we'd sit down. Always the day took this routine where we would take a very long time to get into business and it was kind of almost weird, like frustrating in a way. Like, why aren't we talking about this kind of like, we're here to work. And yet you and I are just distracted taking, and this is before a smoke break. Okay. We're just distracted. Coffee, catching up, blah, blah, blah. It takes us a really long time to get into work. It'd be a lot of like, I don't know. What are you working on? Yeah. Like just sort of like the, I don't know. Yeah. yeah you just was a ramp up was just a long time. And then we would take a smoke break and come back and handle eight hours worth of business Bam. in like an hour. Bam. We would walk away with parse to-do lists. <laughs> Who's doing what? What? What's the action plan? What's the strategy? Who's the kind of client? What kind of partners would we need to bring in? Yeah. What kind of teaming would need to happen in order to have these results? Like, I, I still remember fundamental pieces of our conversations that happen after our, like, well, I don't know why I'm putting it in air quotes, but after our safety meeting. See, that's stigma is that I always have some little cute way of talking Your about euphemism of around ingesting it, yeah. cannabis. Yeah. So I'm talking about that. I'll be like, we had a safety meeting because I'm 50 and I grew up in restaurants and that's how we talk of like, are you going to walk in? Like it was all nuanced. Cloak and dagger, and yeah, yeah, exactly. To just be able to kind of get yourself mind right to be able to wait tables for the night or whatever it is. Meanwhile, somebody gonna... says shots and everybody's like shots, you know, shot, it's... shot, shot, yeah, shot, like shot, it's a... shot. Why is that? Okay. Because, because I don't know if you know this, because the partnership for drug free America is yeah. the alcohol industry. Yep. Because it's very, it's hard. They're not regulating it. They can't tax it. You know, now, yeah. yes, but um, it was really underground for kind of a black market kind of thing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But anyway, we would get like, zoop. We would be really, really intensely saturated work and creativity. 
in this time that happened immediately. That yeah. was really remarkable to me. And I think that, you know, I think people might be surprised by that. I think you've never used cannabis or maybe you've only used cannabis in recreation ways mm -hmm. and not really used it mindfully and intentionally for work or creativity. I think they'd be surprised to hear that pre-cannabis we're all over the place. We're not focused. It's hard to sort of, you know, rein us in. And as soon as we would use cannabis, it was like laser focus, to-do list tasks, you know, and, and brilliant creativity too. And it was yeah. really fun. And it brought some fun into it in a way that really, you know, wasn't like we were getting real work done, but it was like, it felt like just hanging out with a friend. At the I same know, time, exactly. So. Which is a beauty of a creative partnership. And I think an Place that people try and get to. Yeah. I just saw Seth Rogen, like one of the world's most famous stoners, in an interview. And what a like what a what a centered guy he is. Yeah. And his answer to the question just was very casually, like, I'm just one of those rare stoners, or I'm just one of those rare people who can smoke all day and be very productive. Yeah. And all my life I've had people be like, I don't know how you smoke all day and are so productive. For me, that's how I do it. I can be completely unmotivated, smoke a little bit, and then be like ready to tackle even the most tedious tasks or the most creative, the most creative endeavor. Yeah. Because I can stay focused on. It. I don't think that's the case for everybody necessarily. I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm definitely not that. I think again, but everybody is different. Everybody yeah, exactly. is different. Some people need to take medication all day long for their issues, and some people need to take it as needed, right? Same thing with cannabis. Some people can take it all day long and have it be productive and whatever. If I start smoking in the morning, like by the afternoon, I'm pretty done. Like it's hard for me to sort of like kind of keep it going. Right. So I know where my boundaries are. I know how to use it. I know when to use it. I know how much to use it. And that's another thing great about cannabis is there's so many different ways to incorporate it. You don't have to be like smoking doobies on the side, you know, all day long. Again, how old are Why are the camera pan me just now? <laughs> um, that's exactly what I'd be doing. But, you know, but you can be using it in tincture form, which is a smaller application. You can be using it in edibles. You can be using it topically, you know, for pain, yeah. all different. There's all different ways to use it. You can sort of just get out of the mindset of like the old hippie way of, of consuming it. Although joints are my favorite way. I, I like bong hits the best. Yeah. It's just intense. There's nothing like it. I used to have a friend, shout out to Brad, who's definitely not watching. Uh, <laughs> he used to say there's nothing in life a bong hit can't cure. And I really feel like that's true. After 30 years, I've been smoking since I was 25, so almost 30 years of pretty consistent using uh, or would you say using? I guess you would. Yeah. Feels like, oh, I'm a user. I'm using. Um, pretty consistently having cannabis in my life. And it has always felt like there is nothing in life that a bong hit won't cure. Now, does that mean you're immune to disaster, to crisis, to anxiety, to depression, to sadness? No, but it shifts. For me, it's just my perspective enough where I can keep whatever crisis is from becoming the thing that takes me over. And we, let's face it, we're moms, <laughs> we're running businesses, we're running families, we have friendships. The state of the world is like yeah. always, and particularly, it seems like particularly right now, um, kind of crazy. How do you keep that from derailing your peace of mind and your ability to just kind of stay centered and do the right thing? For me, that is the shift in perspective that I need to like not let things ruin ruin my ruin my peace of mind because that's like a to me it's like a cancer on your ability to function in the world is when you just let everything you know internalize and weigh you down and so if a shift of perspective helps me keep that all in check and understand well maybe that's not a thing that's that's happening around me that's not happening to me or things I have control over or don't or understanding someone's motivation yeah behind an action that maybe either hurt me or confuse me if you have shift in perspective you can see like a bigger picture in my opinion i can't tell you how many times that that shift in perspective has happened after using cannabis like you'll have a certain way that you think about something or a problem or an issue that's come up and you're like pretty sure that you're going to handle it a certain way right and you can go through your day for me you know and then i usually smoke at night um, and I'll smoke. And then all of a sudden, every plan that I had for that particular issue is totally like, nope, nope, nope. And I think about, cause I thought about it in a different way. Again, I got out of my own way of yeah, thinking about it exactly. because we get really, 
we sort of one track sometimes and be like, okay, this is the way to do things. And then cannabis brings that perspective shift to be like, no, wait, you can come at it from another way. And it's can be even better. And then you have unique and original ideas and strategy and you can bring that to business, which I think is a tremendous advantage to be able to see things from different perspectives, to be able to understand different. I mean, you're the one who taught me about stakes. I really didn't understand the role of stakes in either storytelling in business and strategy and partnership and planning who has what at stake and how is that contributing to the way things are going here or the way things could go if we acknowledge or um, at least work towards people's strengths rather than fighting against it. You can only know that if you understand stakes. I did not know that before I met you. So I remember that conversation Thanks. very well. Yeah. It was in the backyard of my own house. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, for anyone who's just joining us live in the middle of the show, I am Rebecca Gunter. This is Stone Fruit Roll Up. It is our Thursday morning weekly show here on YouTube and also LinkedIn. And today is 420. And I'm joined with Taylor Campia. Hello. Hello, hello, photographer, videographer, documentarian, storyteller, all around creative person, and one of my sincerest, deepest, most cherished and loved business besties, personally and professionally, Yeah, for sure. You wanted to talk about some other ways in which people can be creative. You've brought some props for us. We'll do a little time check on that. I have to look at my phone, which I know is... We have, we're at the halfway mark. The halfway mark. What a good segment. Hey, Ross, if you're watching, I remembered to do a segment update halfway through. Hi, Ross. (laughs) (laughs) Look at your girl. Look at your girl (laughs) learning. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, what was the title of today? Like cre- unlocking your creative blocks through alternative means or something? Yeah, it it was unblocking, no, it was clearing creative blocks with unconventional means. Yeah. So we don't always have to talk about pot. No, but you know, pot helps. Um, and sometimes <laughs> you use pot in combination with some of these other things that I do too. Yeah. But, again, but again, for me, I have to be really careful about when I use cannabis because it will sort of make me tired at the, you know, after a while. So, you know, during the day, if I really need to figure out how to be creative and unlock those blocks, what am I doing? For me, I love nature. I love the outside. Oh I my love God. If you haven't had a chance to see Taylor's nature photography... Now that is a portrait in natural wonder. Thank you. I appreciate that. It, it, it's a hobby of mine. I love going out and taking pictures. But even if I'm not taking pictures, what the way that that started, the way I started my, my nature photography hobby um, was during the pandemic when I was like, I need to kind of, I need to get some clarity away from my, the four walls of my house. Um, and I, so I started going on these walks, these sort of nature walks. And for me, there that, Again, it's getting out of my own way and and just moving and just being like, okay, I'm not going to think about this creative problem or whatever issue I'm having. I'm just going to go for a walk. I'm just going to get my shoes on and just start walking. And if I can walk to a forest or where there's moving water or something like that, even better. Moving water. Yeah. Oh, there's just something about the sound and the sort of immersive experience of being in a forest with it's, a stream going by. Oh my, that's my dream. Yeah. That's like my Oregon fantasy, baby. <laughs> Like a little stream going by and the and the forest. And the forest. But to me, just you know, you 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 get that creative idea out of your head. You say, I'm not actually gonna think about it. You go for that walk, and then you what you usually find is like you can't stop and think of creative ideas. As soon as you tell yourself no, your your brain's like, Oh, well, actually I'm gonna (laughs) see you on that one. Um uh so I love going outside, I love taking walks, I love nature. That's number one for me for creative um play. That's another one. So just creative play. Plus some yeah, here. let's see what you got here. Let's went, see what you got. Went to Five Below yesterday and was looking for anything cannabis related, which I was like, I guess it's a kid's store, so maybe they wouldn't. But this is yeah. high mm-hmm. bouncing putty. So obviously you only use it when you're high. Uh, that's how you do yeah, it. Yeah, what are we going to do? Um, but no, I, you know, like just getting, again, getting out of your own way, finding ways to help your brain to think about something else yeah. before kind of coming back around to it. You're uh, I have no idea. This is oh, oh dude. I'm already, oh, my, my, oh, my autism is already burning. <laughs> so like, let's already, what I don't know what it's going to be I like. I don't even know. But my, um, your flower photography is my cooking. Yeah. So that's when I'm. So you're, so you like to cook. Is that part of your creative flow? I, I would, I, I would not have said that a couple of years ago, but now I recognize that that's exactly what it is and there is a lot of breaking through perspective when you're experimenting 
Mm. Maybe my autism likes it. Mm. I don't know. Um, like maybe. It. It's like cloud, buddy. It's not. Yeah, I like it on the roll. Yeah. It's not sticky, which is no. It's not. It's. I thought if it was, it was still on my hands, I'd be like very That's uncomfortable for the next. The rest of this segment for sure. I really like it. What is it about cooking to you? Like, do you feel like you get creative ideas while you're cooking? Oh my god! One of my favorite things about cooking is only working with the ingredients that you have, mm. which I like to call guerrilla cooking. So, I, I I'm, it's great to go to the grocery store or to get a market box or to whatever and have loads of groceries and know what you're going to do. But I really enjoy the challenge of when there's a finite amount of things and I'm not going to go to the store. Yeah. And sometimes that means I don't have a key ingredient. Um, or sometimes that means I have a glutton of an ingredient that I want to try and find a way to integrate. Uh, here's an example of something that is very cannabis creative. I was challenged in my own mind today. I'm going to do something really different. I made, <laughs> I made savory French toast. Oh, and so I had like a sun-dried tomato and basil bread. And so I the it was <laughs> it was like sun-dried tomato. I, I did it in the egg batter, but instead of going sweet, I used thyme, salt, pepper, a little bit of smoked paprika. Then I had the bread, and then I had like to, a tomato, like instead of fruit, yeah, and olive oil and a little balsamic instead of syrup, but I styled it to look exactly like French toast. I would have never thought of that. And it wasn't because, like, I'm going to do something different. It was like, I have sun-dried tomato bread. I have tomatoes, but it's kind of breakfast. I have something that can kind of look like cereal. Wouldn't that be cool if I did it this way? And I don't know that I would come up with savory margarita French toast. Not high. Not high. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know if I would have come up with that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love that. That's my favorite, too. I mean, as you know. It's so fun. Okay, it's kind of addictive. But it, but you know, so I think but the great thing Mixed about cooking is, is, it, is tactile too, right? So I think that again, getting out of your head and getting your feet moving, getting your hands touching something, you know, having that tactile an extra input into your brain. Oh my god, helps cooking is well. so sensory experience. You get all um, the senses. Yeah, for anybody who knows me for a while, formerly for a long time, married to a fine dining chef, and one thing I learned from him that always surprised me was how much he relies on his ears for cooking. The sound of something in a pan. Yeah. You, you should be able to hear whether or not that's, that steak is done, he would say. Or you should be able to hear whether or not your grits are at a consistency by like the quality of mm -hmm. the pop of the boil of the bubble, essentially. Wow. And so I've really been aware of it's so much more than just like the mechanics of cooking. A lot of people say baking is an exact science. I said bullshit. <laughs> as long as you understand how things work and ratio, you can be as creative as you want. Yeah. But it is about like smelling your ingredients, touching them, tasting them, what do they feel like in your hand? Like, yep. you know, when something, you know, you know, when something's kind of like spoiled yeah. by how it feels yep. in your hand or it smells or something like that. Um, and then you can imagine what ingredients are going to pair like together and how they'll present and whether it's going to work or not. Yeah. I certainly have some failures, but if you think of it all as a grand experiment, just like business. Everything is an experiment. Everything, Everything is, an experiment. is an experiment. Yeah. Which is what makes being creative with it. Fine. But again, so you know fun. what? That's, we actually talked about this in the first episode, how, you know, that's sort of a mantra of mine in business. Like everything is an experiment and then you never fail. You just get more data to be able to improve the next time. And I think, yeah. Right? Girl, I think if, if everybody had that attitude, we would have a lot less angsty entrepreneurs out here because yes. they're so afraid to look stupid yeah, that they, they don't, don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Look Me stupid. Yeah, Play I mean, with silly putty on a live. Yeah. Talk about 420, how you're getting a stone all day to make better writing or better creativity. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. It but is a great experiment. It is a great experiment. But again, I think cannabis releases that inhibition, releases the attachment to the outcome. Yeah. I must post you right in the yeah. face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to being like in a Zoom scenario that when I like get animated, I forget you're actually a real fucking person. Oh, wait, right let's, let's, let's acknowledge that. This is your first on location live. This well. is my first on location live, which so, I think yeah. is working out well. It is. I mean, how convenient is it that we've got a videographer here to like come live? I was able to roll in like 
20 minutes before our shoot and just kind of get set up. So you set us up for success and you were open to it, which was also very, that was cool. fun. Super fun. I love it. No, this yeah. is awesome. This is, I, this is cool. Yeah. We are really get some lights and make exactly. It look make it look beautiful and try it out. I just want to acknowledge before we move on to another topic, that thing about experimentation versus failure. Mm-hmm. I have a client shout out to Jen Thornton from three or four coaching who talks about this all of the time. She just released a new podcast called let's fix leadership. And if you get a chance to listen to episode one, which is perfectionism is a tool of fear and that because she's neuroscience informed. And what I learned from her is that if your brain is in fear mode, it is not physically possible for it to innovate. Yep. They are mutually exclusive. So if you are afraid, you cannot innovate, you cannot be creative, you cannot come up with new ideas because you are in essentially lizard brain mode. You can't do it. So when you're thinking about business in terms of success and failure, like, oh, I failed at that. And that brings shame to you instead of like, I failed at that girl. That did not work out in an experimental mindset. You're never going to grow your business. You're never going to grow your role within a company. You're never going to grow your, you know, your own personal self because you're in fear mode. So stop thinking about it like failure and success and start thinking about it like experimentation. And Stone Fruit Roll-Up is a huge experiment. Yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, the show is two months old and I still don't know what the show is at all. But release yourself from the outcome. I know. What will happen. I know. We're going to have to release ourselves from the outcome here very shortly, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jilly, who's still with us here in the audience in the comments, which is awfully awesome, uh, all the way from the UK. Uh, and anyone else who is hanging on yeah. and getting, getting into it with us. But thank you for sharing that about the neuroscience behind it. Because, again, that is so true. Because if you have any you know, mental health issues, right? Like anxiety, PTSD, um, you know, any tra- trauma, any kind of trauma, which I think everybody in this world has, has some trauma. Has oh my experienced God. Show trauma. me someone who does it. Um, but if you're, again, if your body is in fight or flight mode, if your lizard brain is taken over, you cannot, your, your, everything is about survival. And there is no creativity in survival, right? It's no. about food, shelter, water. That's exactly so, right. So, you know, I think what a beautiful thing. And for those of us who have deeper trauma responses of of, uh, freeze or fawn, I'm a freezer. Well, how does that work in business? Not good. Not good at all. And I've had a lot of those moments here since the pandemic of being in a freeze mode and having to have like, you know, having to have you or um, Jilly in a coaching session basically on thaw me from freeze mode because I'm panicked. Yeah. You cannot innovate. I would have never started a live show without ever doing a live show. <laughs> if it weren't for yeah. clearing that freeze moment. And yeah. Yeah, for sure. What are some other ways we clear our freeze moments and unblock those creativity pathways? That's an excellent question. I have a hard time thinking about other strategies because I have such a reliable strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will share this interesting creativity blocker Michelle gave me for Christmas three years ago. It's like one of my favorite Christmas presents. Whoa. Sorry, my phone. This is the Creative Thinking Journal by Pilgrim Soul. Let me tell you how productive I've been in it. All the pages are blank. However, (laughs) it's got some really cool exercise in it. Um, you can write a new prescription for yourself. You can, it's like a, kind of like a doodle book for creativity. You can place, you know, do some exercises around, um, writing, Love thinking. Is like this the journal you advertise is use while high? This is use while high. Use while high. Well, yeah, I this is that. use while high. Um, it was absolutely my favorite Christmas present that year. Why haven't we done this? We should be doing it right now. 100% next time. <laughs> for yeah, sure like next like time is, i gotta check to see whether that's me dinging it could be i'm sorry i think it's not i think it's over there but i can take well, that's that okay you're allowed yeah. to ding yeah yeah ding um okay so i did want to talk about one more thing um, i'm so glad about creativity and just sort of resiliency because this is something that i've noticed in myself especially post pandemic resiliency is that i feel like my resiliency reserves are depleted Like, I feel like, you know, again, when you have trauma, you have these mental health issues that sometimes like 
you know, we're, we, we get into this survival mode where we're just going and we're like, we can take care of that task and that task and get the kids to school. And we're just constantly in this just do, 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 go, go, go mode. And what happens is we've sort of, we, we, we now are in overwhelm. We have now reached oh burnout God. level and we cannot actually continue to move forward. So we have to like figure out what we're going to do. I feel like what I heard the other, I heard, I was at a conference the other day and somebody said this, that celebrating small accomplishments, celebrating little wins actually increases your resiliency. So by in your daily life, thinking about ways to celebrate success, whether or not it's sweet, the coffee mm. is amazing. I made it perfectly today. It is a perfect temperature. She perfect made temperature. it perfectly today. I agree. I'm so proud of myself. Good job, me. It could be something as small as that too. Oh my gosh, I just had a great call with a client. I'm so excited. I just sent out a budget. I just cleaned my bathroom. You know, good job, me. But celebrating those small little wins throughout the day will increase your resiliency reserves. And I found, so since then, I'm kind of like slowly implementing that, like, good job, Taylor, you got out of bed today. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself, you know? And that is seriously something. Sometimes it is, you know, sometimes, good job, I washed my face before bed. I didn't just go to bed with a full face of makeup, you know? Like, but it's those little things of, you know, celebrating the things that maybe just feel like I should be doing that anyway, but reminding yourself that like, Life's a struggle, so reward yourself. For you're it. also changing your internal dialogue. Yeah. Like, um, you know, if, if you're not practicing making that a practice, it can be easy for toxic thoughts to show up and take over. I have a tendency to I have a tendency to call myself a, a like a pretty hateful and toxic word. I'm just subconsciously when I mess up, like if I drop let's just say I drop a, a raw egg on the floor, I'll immediately call myself a stupid c word wow immediately and then i have to talk myself out of it like dude okay you dropped an egg like chill out <laughs> but if you practice celebrating like i didn't drop the egg today i i made it through this whole practice without jerk, dropping a single egg or whatever it is and you're retraining your subconscious voice to stop being an asshole to you. If you have one that's kind of an asshole to you, which a mind can oh, be. Oh, yeah. Oh, that inner critic? Yeah, she's a... Yeah, she's, no, not see, she's, nice she's a stupid C word. Yeah, I'll tell you that. That's right. That's right. But you know what? Again, we shouldn't, shouldn't talk... All of our parts are useful and we should all be celebrate That's just the word that I don't know why, but it's psychological. Like, we need that's a therapist true. in here. Psychologically, why? I don't know, but that is what I call myself. Subconsciously, when I make a mistake... And I've gotten better about it, yeah. but it's been celebrating those small victories and letting positive subconscious, I guess it's dialogue because it's self-talk, start to become the norm rather than, you know, or that the, when I call myself a stupid C word in my, my mind, it's not as often or as painful yeah. as when I used to. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I think that we can take this one step further and improve our relationships by acknowledging those little successes yeah. in the people that we love. Oh. And not just about like, you know, our kids, like we're going to, hey, awesome, you hung the towel up, yay. Like, that's great. But extending it to our friendships. Yeah. Um, shout out to Tony Pareko, with whom I have that beautiful relationship of always celebrating these like little moments. Like if you got your car started or if you made it to the store to get half and half, or if you got your taxes in on from any little thing, we'll celebrate in each other. Of, yeah. Of accomplishing that. And it, I think it invests self-belief in the other person. It shows them their value if they've forgotten it. Yeah. And it gets them also thinking in those words of like, even if, for a while, they're thinking, oh, I got to text Bay and tell her I, I remember to change that light bulb that I keep forgetting to change. Or I finally, you know, I don't know, think of some other like mundane thing or, or whatever. Yeah. You can continue to invest in the other person and change their own inner dialogue as well just by celebrating value even when it's like very, very incremental. Yep. Yep. I like to celebrate the ridiculousness of overwhelming situations sometimes. Like <laughs> 
Yes, you know? tell me a story. Well, no, just like just like that situation with the egg, right? You know, and usually those situations happen when you've already had like the day from hell, and oh, like yeah. it's just like you know your your car broke down, you lost a client, you know your kid's sick from school, you got it. Like there's just a mountain of things that have happened in one day, and then the net the last possible thing is you drop an egg on the floor in the middle of your already late for dinner, mm-hmm. making dinner, and you, it's like yeah, your first mm-hmm. initial reaction is like. What the, you know, right? So I've tried to be like to, to, to flip it, like like almost like my life is now a comedy, and now this is sort of like the comedic um, relief of like everything that's going on. And then she drops an egg on the floor, so like I'll narrate in a funny voice. And then she dropped a fucking egg on the floor, you know. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that was what a way to keep perspective. You got to keep the perspective. back to shifting perspective. Yeah, that happened to me today. Actually, I um, had a sh- <laughs> I have a shelf in my bathroom that's like not happy with its lack of anchoring into the wall and so it's like just constantly rebelling like one you know eighth of an inch at a time and today i was i, I came from way out in Anne Arundel county which means i have to face like 495 in traffic which i haven't had to deal with in a long time so i'm like trying to get out the door trying to get my face on trying to pack all the equipment and stuff and i like went to just put a little bit of moisture on my face and i went and the whole shelf went and came off and everything slid down and instead of calling myself a stupid C I just said classic me yeah like classic me classic thing classic Classic, right and how much better did that feel so much better because then you were like well I'll fix that when I get home versus yeah the shelf fell off and I guess we're kind of back to a shift in perspective perspective because Maybe if I hadn't had my 6.30 a.m. morning bong hit, I might have been more disheveled by such a conundrum when I'm trying to get out the door. Yeah. And instead, just were like, classic me. Classic me. Indeed. But it's fine. I mean, it's better. It's way better. And sometimes you need cannabis. Sometimes that does that will happen to me where I'm feeling like everything, the world is against me. Everything is going wrong and I'm just overwhelmed and I can't take it anymore. And I'll just be like, you know what? I have a medication for this. I'll take a hit off. There's of nothing vape. in life a bong hit can't cure. I'll take a hit off my vape or whatever. And within seconds, my, sh- my perspective has shifted. To everything's okay. I'm going to get it all done. You know, it does, it does warp time a little bit. So the, po- cannabis has its positive and its drawbacks too. It warps time a little bit for me. You it, know, it, it's your, it girl. warps my bank account. I'll tell you that. <laughs> also, why is it not subsidized by prescription, like, like other prescription medications? Why does it, why can I not get Ooh, my girl, insurance? The, what do you think Big Pharma is going to let that happen? Not no until man, they Pam. synthesize it and monetize it and That's figure exactly out how to prescribe right. it. No but, way, Jose. Um, but yeah, so I'll I'll use a little bit of cannabis, and again, my perspective has been shifted, and now everything doesn't seem so hard. Everything doesn't seem so overwhelming, and I can laugh at myself, and I can find joy in, in those moments again. And then she dropped an egg on the floor. And then she dropped <laughs> damn egg on the floor. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about what you're working on now, where you're channeling this creativity to or towards. What are your what's yeah, what's your major project that you're breaking through? Yeah. Creative blocks with. Oh my gosh. So many. I mean, as, as a creative, I think you're never done creating. Like even if you you might have projects that you know you're working on, you have clients, obviously, but there's always room for more creativity and personal work and things like that. Um, we're, you know, we have a couple of documentaries we're working on. We have a couple of, we work with, you know, nonprofit clients, things like that. But really for me, the creativity that I use it for is, is finding the inspiration to, still do creative work for myself Mm. because when you're creative and you've monetized your creativity and you do it for clients on a daily basis, it can be really hard to create space for yourself to then be creative for your own personal work and to, to still feel like your creativity hasn't been sapped by your clients and by the need to, to, to work for somebody else, but to be able to turn it around and use it for yourself. So I'm really trying to get back into the practice of doing self-portraiture, trying to get back into... They are hot, y'all. Taylor, what's your Instagram for people to see that stuff? Um, I have Taylor K Photo DC. And then, um, yeah, that would probably be the one for my photography. And then Tay K Photo, T-A-Y-K Photo. 
can share both of those. So one's more artistic and one's from my my. Yeah, guitar. while you're giving your shout out, <laughs> what, what about Make a Scene Media? Yeah, so Where can make, people find you there? Yeah, so Make a Scene Media is just hashtag Make a Scene Media at Make a Scene Media dot com. Um, and we do yeah all kinds of video work. Basically anything with a, with a camera, I can do photography, videography, um, you name it. She can do it. But let me tell you what Taylor's sweet spot is, which is capturing moments of profound transition. I think that where she has uh, just a, a divine gift is to find moments, stories, people, events that are in this space of like vast, I, I want to say disruption, but that sounds like it's negative. Like imagine just a flower opening and you capture people on the cusp of when they have their like foot is leaving the ground from their past selves or the old story and their other foot is like almost touching like if you can imagine almost touching the ground you capture that moment I would say like almost mid canter right. and it's like phenomenal so wow. if you are someone who is reinventing themselves and you need someone to tell some stories on video or you need someone to capture that in a professional headshot or you have got something to say you're in the middle of a transformation. Taylor is your girl for sure. So be Thank sure you. to check her out on her platforms. Thank you for that. I really, I appreciate you saying that. I've actually never put it that way, which is, I wasn't like, you know, something that you've, it isn't copy you've written for me because, but we should write it now. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> um, uh, that is, we really captured it. Like that is what I want in this life in this, and in, in, out of my creativity and out of my work is to help people to empower themselves, to share their stories, and to feel confident in that storytelling, right? And so I think that's part of the exercise I'm doing here, which is putting myself in that hot seat, <laughs> like letting mm -hmm. myself share that as well. Um, but that is my favorite thing to do is to watch that magic unfold on my camera, but then to show that person, to be able to show somebody a headshot that they cry and they're like, I've never seen myself this way before, but that's me. That's who I am. You know, I just realized we actually share such a fucking powerful common thread. Okay. In our work. And it's just occurring to me. Okay. So, um, Tony articulates what I do is showing someone their value mm -hmm. in word. And for me, it's words, right? And when people look at a positioning statement that I write for them or copy that I write for them, or we go through a coaching session and you get that same moment of like, well, these words on the page are true, but I never felt that way before. And you can see them like kind of expand and breathe into this like version of themselves they didn't know had so much value. You're showing people visually their value. Mm -hmm. Like when someone looks at a picture of themselves that you took, you're like, oh my God, I didn't even know I had that magic in me. I didn't even know that was there. You're validating their value in such a beautiful way and I do it with words and you do it with pictures and action. I didn't even think about that but I that didn't is, either because you're right I've read the copy that, you, that we've worked through together that you've helped me with from my website or my LinkedIn and I'm like how do you know me better than I know myself why is this written better than I could tell you about myself like I don't know how did you get it out of my brain and onto the paper and it's interesting I've heard the same thing from people I yeah. this is the version of myself I see in my head but I've never been able to see it on a picture before you know and that is a that's a gift. You did it for Saturn, who was coming, you know, from 13 into 14. Yeah. Talk about a transition in all kinds of ways. And Saturn looked at pictures and was like, it's almost like they see themselves for the first time unfiltered. Yeah. Even though photography can kind of be around filter, but showing someone their true essence and value, I think almost is our gift we share together. Oh gosh, wow, I had no idea, look at that. I didn't know either, <laughs> I just came to this epiphany while we we're sitting here and I was listening to you talk about your work. And I was like, oh my God, we do the same thing, but just words versus images. This is the magic of, of these conversations, right? I think that just kind of sitting down and having these conversations and sharing what, you know, what drives you and what makes you want to, like, this is why I think this, these conversations are fun to watch because I hope so. There's magic. Cause that's the point of the whole thing, right? Magic happening in every conversation. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Can you see what time it is? I cannot see what time it is. What time is it? Oh my goodness. Wow. That hour goes so fast. I know it does. I, my spidey sense was tingling that we were coming to the end of our time today. And I'm trying to be very, very good at ending exactly on the hour. 
Ross. That's two gold stars. Okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Is there anything else you want to share with the throat roll up? The throat roll up. The throat roll up. <laughs> wow. The throat roll up. Is there anything else you want to share with our audience today? Um, no, but I just want to thank you for the opportunity again to uh, come on the show. I, I'm, I mean, you're, you're an inspiration to me. I mean, I would have never, I work in video, I work in this, this medium and doing a live show terrifies me. I would never do it. So the fact that you are doing it is just awe inspiring and you've been inspiring since I met you. And I, so I just want to thank you for all the work that you've done with me and for me. And I'm just grateful. My God, right back at you. Probably because I have no experience with a live show is why I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because now I'm like, damn, I don't know if I would have said yes if I knew it was all this. But um, it's been an awesome opportunity to expand my skill set in a way I didn't know before. So thank you for that acknowledgement. And also right back at you. I can't tell you how many times I hear compliments of people like, I love how you brought this brand to life visually on your website. I get comments on your photography all of the time. Taylor has done all of my headshots. Taylor's done all the fruit photography on Stone Fruit. We have a very special photo we're going to release today. Just for You are? Right. Yes, yes, girl! Yes, we're giving that one up. Just for 420, last year when we did a photo shoot, we did just a few pictures with, you know, Taylor had this beautiful perspective of like all the fruit underneath it and she's kind of coming at it and we had the idea of putting you know, cannabis flower, like in between the fruit, just to have a 420 photo shoot. So because cannabis is a beautiful plant. It is actually beautiful. And those were gorgeous. Well, in fact, yeah. you kicked my buds out and, and got some new buds. You're like, these are too small. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get some good ones. Yes. So speaking of good ones, we'll definitely be having a safety meeting here shortly. I yes. Buds. In indeed. Indeed. Best Thanks buds, everybody buds for together. coming and checking us out. There is a, um, there is a website if you want to check out some old episodes, not on YouTube. You can visit us at stonefruitrollup.com. If you're interested in photography and videography and branded storytelling, Taylor, say your website one more time. Makeascenemedia.com or taylorkphoto.com. Absolutely. And if you're interested in some stoner-inspired creative writing and copy that will sound... Like, you don't even know why I came up with that idea, but now you do. Please join us over at Stonefruit, S-T-O-N-E-D-F-R-U-I-T.com and start your own brand venture. Jilly, I did a call to action. Can we do the point? Like and subscribe. Don't smash forget. that, smash that subscribe button. You guys do the thing. <laughs> join us here every week, <laughs> Thursdays at 9.30 Dude, Eastern. That's why we need to always be partners. One that's more right. link. Hey. Okay. All right. All right, everybody. I'm leaning in to turn off the end broadcast. Very good. Very good. Very good.